since the replacing of the tamid, the continual, the ministry of Christ with that of another, and they have the female form of the deity Lucifer, who is androgenic, both male and female. He can appear as Matreya or he can appear as Mary. And both of these deities are interchangeable, or you can have a total mixture of them. So homosexuality, lesbianism, all these things are totally acceptable depending on whether you are on the white or the black or the merged squares. The Bible, Revelation 14, 12, also talks about something to base your faith on. Here's the patience of the saints. Here are the ones who keep the commandments of God. So one pillar of faith is the commandments of God and the other is the faith of Jesus. Whereas in Luciferian worship it is the victory over Jesus and the replacing of Jesus which take the place of those two components. And these two world systems are coming into collision. And that's where the rubber will meet the road. Let's go into the book of amulets, New Age teaches about trinkets and amulets and little charms and things like that and they have all kinds of shapes and sizes. We'll be dealing with them as we go into Freemasonry. It also teaches about the cosmic keys, two keys. Which were the keys to heaven and to hell and who is the one who holds the keys today? Who is the high priest of the keys in the world? It is the Pope who has the twin Keys. So all the symbols in Freemasonry are also the symbols of Catholicism. And remember the old decrement, if it looks like a duck and it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, then it's a duck. The two systems are exactly the same. Then there's pyramid power. Pope Sixtus had the pyramid on his head. They use all the Egyptian monoliths in Catholicism. They are more in, in Rome than they are in Egypt. Pyramid power. It is interesting that the pyramid power that you have is a counterfeit. It's a counterfeit. Everything the devil does is a counterfeit of the true. So somewhere of the true there must also be some pyramid. I don't know where it is. One interesting speculation that I heard is that the new city, the new Jerusalem might be shaped like that because it is as wide as it is broad, as it is deep, as it is high. And a pyramid has, of course, exactly those dimensions. Anyway, it's also the teaching of astrology. In other words, determining the future by studying the stars. And that is something which the Bible also condemns, very strictly condemns. So astrology forms part of the New Age, natural healing. Well, there's healing in the biblical sense, and then there is a counterfeit healing. Because truth must always be mingled with error. And you have hands of light. And the idea is that every single human being is Christ. And has the capacity of Christ. We're all equal and we can all learn to be like Christ. And to perform the miracles that Christ formed, uh, performed by our own power. Archetypes of the tree of life, the tarot patchwork, the Enochian workbook. These are all New Age um, documents and they tell us something about the philosophy. Now the book of Enoch was of course a Gnostic book and Gnostic writings and apocryphal writings are part of the Roman Catholic system but they are not part of the Christian system in terms of the Bible and we'll be dealing with that later as well. So inherent in the New Age movement you have Gnosticism and Gnosticism is nothing other than the ancient Egyptian cult of Osiris which has its basis in Baal worship and it comes from Babylon. So because the, the sun god has both black and white properties, good and evil incorporated in one, you can be on either side of the spectrum. So the worship of this deity can, in, for example, in, uh, embody witchcraft, straightforward witchcraft, the complete book of witchcraft, Wicca witches, and they claim that they are good witches and that they are bad witches. And it doesn't really matter which one you are, because you're still worshipping the same deity. And by the balancing of these forces you find harmony. But God said, I don't want you to know about evil. The fact that you know about evil, does that mean that you have to be evil in order to be able to expose good? Yes or no? 
Absolutely not. Of course you can be good while you know about evil. Why do you have to practice evil? There's no need to have a yin-yang experience in this. Tarot, foretelling the future either by direct revelation from spirits or through the cards or through the stars. Seeds of magic. Magic is a very important uh, component of occultism. So you'll find this being propagated more and more and more and more in the schools and uh, through the media and the entertainment world. Stephen O'Brien, voices from heaven. So you have communication with the dead, you have communication with spirit beings. And then of course the archetypes of the zodiac embrace femininity and make the role of the woman very prominent because Eve fell, the redemption has to come through a woman and the new woman whether it is the goddess or whether you make Mary the goddess is the one that succeeds where Mary failed. So you have feminism embraced this, this as well. Powers of the rays, light becomes very important and they call themselves the enlightened ones, the illuminated ones. That's where the Illuminati comes from and uh, it is the same in Eastern mysticism. You have Buddhism and the Lotus which refers to the coming of the cosmic and the, uh, the Christ, various aspects of the Christ. You have candle burning rituals and you have symbolism such as the sun and the sun blazes behind the heads and triangles become very important, life forces, alchemy. And alchemy in the final analysis no longer concentrates so much on producing gold out of baser metals, but alchemy concentrates on producing the golden personality, the light giving personality, the light being giving being out of the baser product that existed before. So in the age of Aquarius we will learn to become God. That was the promise of the serpent. By the way, crystals are reflectors or channelers of this light and the rose is a symbol of Lucifer. It's one of his main symbols. Now let me get one thing straight here. Everything that exists on this planet was created by whom? By God. So if the devil wants to make the rose his main symbol, so be it. Does that mean I cannot take a rose into my house or plant it in my garden? Of course not. God made the rose. Who's he to say that it's his? It's God's rose. I can take the rose in my house. I don't care what his symbols are. So as far as all these symbols are concerned, and there are hundreds of them, we will be dealing with them and showing them and exposing them. But I don't have to be afraid of them. They're just stupid lines on a piece of paper and stupid little silly games that these people play in their little secret little mysteries and their secret communications. It's like a bunch of kids at school with secret passwords and handshakes and like that. It's silly, it's pathetic when you think about it. Uh, I get quite worked up about it occasionally. That was calm down. <laughs> Ancient magic of the new age. Now let's have a little closer look again at some of the more interesting details. Planetary magic. Now this is a new age book and there again you find the same symbolism as you had in Catholicism and that you had in uh, Masonry. There are the twin pillars. Let's look this a little bit larger. Twin pillars and you will see that it is the dragon that is involved because the dragon encircles the pillars and on the one hand you have the half moon and you have the sun being born in the half moon and that is Baal Haddad. That's the sacrifice. So it's exactly the same as if you had put the Eucharist there in the form of the Mass because that's what it represents. And on the other hand here you have the face of Apollo on the sun. Now in Catholicism you put Mary there which is just the female aspect of the same God Apollo. So whether you put him there in his male form or whether you put him there in his female form it doesn't really matter. It's one and the same because when you look at the top what do you have there? You have the eagle's wings and you have androgyny. You have the male-female aspect joined at the hips. It's a sexual cult. It's androgynous. So sun, moon and star worship are the aspects 
and that we find in the New Age movement, it's the same aspects we find in all the religions. Now, in order to achieve Godhood, mankind has to be born again. So it is a born-again experience. Now if you are a Freemason, you also go through a baptism, but not a biblical one. You go and lie, either on the floor covered up in a death shroud, and you are raised by the lion's grip by the worshipful master, or you go and lie in a coffin, and you get raised out of a coffin. In Catholicism, if you join a special order or a nun's order, they also have to lie in a coffin, and they are raised up out of the coffin. So that is born again. So a, a mason can say, yes, I am born again. And it would mean something totally different to what someone else says. And in order to achieve a higher state of consciousness, often you have to go through this process with a little bit of assistance and drugs and uh, beat and rhythm and all of those play a part. So here you have fallen angel. This is a uh, a product that is sold. It's called a smart drink. Now you all have smart drinks in this country as well. I don't know what you call them over here. In our country you have all kinds of smart drinks. They're very high in caffeine and substances like that. And these smart drinks actually enhance drugs. So if you, if you have young people who are on ecstasy for example and then they, are, they don't have ecstasy, if they take a smart drink and they have the right rhythm, it will kick in the same experience, put them into an altered state of consciousness, and they can experience this feeling of being on a higher level and becoming gods or Christs. So the drug world is going to become very, very prominent, and these so-called smart drinks are not so smart at all, they're actually pathetically stupid drinks, and we shouldn't really take them. I don't know what they call them over here. Do you have things like a certain color bull, for example, and it gives you wings and things like that? Have you got those stupid adverts as well in this country? I haven't seen them since I'm here. This is the package you can buy it in, in this particular store in Europe. And it says, warning, this bag contains up to 100% G's no. In other words, what it's basically saying, when you buy this, there's no Jesus in it. 100% no Jesus, you are worshipping the other one. And then they have the symbol of the skull and the bones, which is the symbol of Saturn, the god of the dead. If we go into the, the computer world, our young people are bombarded with witchcraft. There's a game that they played a few years ago, which was called Hexen, which is the reverse of Revelation, which puts Lucifer on the top as the victor and Christ at the bottom as the loser and the the, the graphics in this were absolutely horrendous. Now all of this doctrine that we shall be like gods comes from the very beginning. The lie in the beginning, and we dealt with it last night. The serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Is it so that God has said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the tree of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said to the woman, You shall not surely die. Now we dealt with that in great detail last night. For God knows that in the day that you eat of it, then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now if this ploy was so successful with the unfallen Adam and Eve, how much more successful is it going to be at the end of time with fallen mankind? And so the New Age movement is the mass media arm of the occult world. It is controlled by Freemasonry, which in turn is controlled by Catholicism. I'll show you that in future lectures, so hang around. I'll show it to you from their own symbols and from their own mouths.